Jesus, Henry. Are you out of your mind? Christ above, I've met some mad bastards in my time, but... Do you take me for a madman? I've nothing to do with your daughter. Hello everyone and welcome back. Last time we saw Henry play the wingman in Sir Capon's quest to solve his wild oats. Unless you're covering for him. Yes. It was an affair that involved espionage. You must be Sir Alphonse, eh? The roads ain't safe at all these days. Indeed, indeed, I concur. One must be wary, well, cautious, even, when travelling. Dark spirits. Um. In a dash of operatic flair. And with zeal. Uh, Not bad. Not bad. Once more. That's the way. You're doing well. Whether well, Capon's balls will survive intact remains to be seen. Blasted fool Capon. I'll wring his neck. Neck. I'll have his balls on a platter! But one issue that had come up during that entire sordid affair was that the roads just weren't safe. Two wagons that were on the way here with grain and fodder supplies were ambushed by a band of cumans. As bailiff of Pribislavets, he was responsible for the safety of the town. But how was he supposed to keep the villagers fed if they couldn't bring in supplies? That had to be taken up with Sir Radzik. With the utmost tact and diplomatic skill, of course. Well, I thought since we chased the bandits out of Pribislavets, the roads would be safer. Ah, criticizing your liege lord, are you? And what, in your opinion, should he do about it? Oh no, I don't mean anything by it. Just that it surprises me. <laughs> Easy, lad. I'm only pulling your leg. You're quite right. The roads really aren't safe. Mostly due to one thing. My garrison is a shamble these days. I lost most of my men in Skalitz, and what I'm left with after Pribislavitz is hardly enough even to guard Pigstein. Let alone guarding the roads and patrolling the rest of the province. I simply don't have the men. Uh-huh. I understand. That is, I didn't have the men. As it happens, you've come at just the right time. Recently, I asked an old acquaintance for help. Sir Kuno of Rickwald and his mercenary band. The men who ride with him are a rough lot. Mostly former convicts, but they're as capable as any squad of soldiers. Well, excuse me for being so bold, but there's plenty of mercenaries around. Surely you can find a more... respectable band? You have a point, lad, but I'd like to tell you I talked to Kuno because I trust him. But actually my reasons are of a more pragmatic nature. You see, Kuno owes me a favour, so he'll serve me free of charge. So you want me to join them? Yes, but that's not all. I told Kuno I'd send him a guide. But really what I need is for someone to keep a close eye on him and his men. Someone reliable. And I'd say you fit the part. Go and report to him at his encampment. You'll ride with his band on patrols and make sure they don't get too... disorderly. Who is this Sir Kuno of Rickwald? He's the last baron of the house of Rickwald which became impoverished. So he took to the mercenary trade like many poor noblemen do, unless they become robbers, which often isn't all that different. He's certainly an entertaining companion, but as a mercenary, well, let's just say he has his own particular approach to certain matters. That well, sounds a little worrying. Oh, it's nothing too bad, just that now and again he needs reminding not to step over the line. How is he indebted to you? I did him quite a big service, actually. I saved him from the hangman. Oh, that sounds like quite a story. How did it happen? You should ask him. You'll be spending quite a while riding together, so it'll help pass the time. But one thing I can tell you, he seems to have taken inspiration from me. A lot of his men had their own encounters with the executioner too. Henry had done more than his fair share to address the problem. Bandit camps for Captain Bernard, Kuman camps for Sir Robard, the assault on the ruins of Pribislavets, smashing the counterfeiting operation. 
you would think that we'll put a dent on the numbers of bandits, but they just seem endless. It's as if they were being spawned out of thin air. But like a good leech, Saratsik was well aware of the issues. Maybe this mercenary band of his could finally put a stop to the banditry plaguing the province. I'll be with you. Uh, I'm looking for Sukuno. Sukuno? Uh, Baron Rickvold. Isn't this his camp? You won't get nothing out of him. You must be Radzig's man. I heard he was supposed to send someone. Yes, Sir Radzig sent me as a guide. I'm Henry. I'm Jakey. And this here fella, we call the Stone. Hmm, I can see why. What's up with him? Cat got his tongue? No. More like the dog got it. The executioner's dog. <laughs> when the executioner ripped it out of him. Anyway, you better come along with me. I'll introduce you to the other fellas. And the chief. These here are the Bearman brothers, Petter and Jan. They're a barrel of laughs, except when they're too drunk to string two words together. Like now. Don't get on the wrong side of them, though. When their blood is up, well, it ain't a pretty sight. Pleased to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. Never mind the fancy poses, Stefan. You're trying to kill the fucker, not teach him how to dance. And you, Dangler, stand your ground. Don't let him lead you round by the nose. Sir? Well, sir, this is Henry. From Co... From Lord Kobler. Ah, oh, it's about time Rads had got round to this. We need someone who knows their way round these parts. Leave off with the uh, bowing and curtsying. We don't hold with that tomfoolery here. Jakey! Where the hell are you sneaking off to? Go to the farm and get water. The lads are thirsty. But I went last time. And you'll go next time, you ungrateful pup. Get your ass moving. Snot-nosed brat. You pull them out of a pile of shit. And they thank you with back talk. Where were we? Oh, yeah. We need a guide who knows these parts. So I hope I can rely on you, Herman. It's Henry. Right. Well, as I said to Radzig, I don't want to carry any dead weight. We could find ourselves in some very tight situations where every sword counts. Oh. I know how to handle a sword, all right? I've heard a lot of fellas say that. I still ended up on the wrong end of one. <laughs> we'll find out. Stefan, take a break. Dangler! Let's find out what Harold here can do. Sure. No problem, Chief. <coughs> Sorry, lad, but like I said, I need someone who can handle a weapon well, and that's not you. <laughs> what? You're not going to take me? No. You just hold us back. It was a small band, but they looked capable enough, and Kuno seemed grizzled enough to have seen many a campaign. More than capable enough if Dangler was anything to go by. And ruthless too, they hadn't given Henry a chance to dress up in his armour. So, the farmer goes to his neighbour and says, Look, the girl's not the brightest, but she's got a kind soul. She'll do anything to please you. And we'll even throw in my best cock as a dowry. So, the neighbour agrees and marries the girl. The day after the wedding, the father comes by to see how the newlyweds are getting on. But to his surprise, he sees the groom kneeling in the courtyard over the cock, which is lying dead on the ground. Jesus, he says. What happened here? Well, the wife says to me, what can I do to please you? And I says to her, You can grab my cock and squeeze it, and don't stop squeezing till it's stiff. 
They might give off a jovial vibe, but talking to some of the fellows while licking his wounds didn't dispel the impression that there was some real ruthlessness behind the banter. Can you tell me something about yourself, Jan? Why not? I haven't been to confession for a while. <laughs> How did you end up in Kuno's band? Ah, it's nothing new for me and my brother. We've been fighting for coins since we were old enough to carry swords. Last time we rode with one Lombardian by the name of Collini. All over Bavaria, Austria and that. What happened? Did you fall out? Nah, we just wanted to come back to Bohemia. You know how it is. When no one understands a word you say, it ain't worth a damn. You and Petter seem very close. As brothers should be, lad. Nah, to tell the truth, I'd never have guessed the two of you came from the same mother. Oh, we've got the same ma, all right. I ain't got no ma, and neither does he. <laughs> and the same goes for our pa. It's probably Satan himself. Oh. I'm a bit confused. You're not actually brothers. We might be. We might not. A band of mercenaries found us in a village when I was still a baby, and Petter hardly walking. Playing in the dirt together, we was. Their leader took a shine to us for some reason. He took us away and raised us up. Raised us with swords for playthings and ale for mother's milk. A few years later, he was killed in Saxony. The band fell apart, but we joined another right away. That's the way it's been ever since, over and over. So you two never had... Well, um... A normal life. We ride from one fight to another, risking our necks and killing who they pay us to kill. That's normal for us. Always has been. Me and my brother been riding with coin men since we was little. This was just another mercenary band for us. But Kuno seemed like a decent kind of fellow who'd treat us fair. Your brother was saying you rode before with some Kalini fella. He did, did he? But did he tell you why we finished with him? Yeah, he said you missed Bohemia. Ha <laughs> ha! Missed Bohemia! That's good! Ha <laughs> ha But it ain't far from the truth. Jan missed any place where he wouldn't have a band of furious Italians looking to skin him alive. Ah. He did something to anger them. Oh, aye. While Collini was away, he broke into the trunk where the coin was kept. Took it all and wagered it with a fellow who claimed his bear knew how to dance. And lost it all. What? The bear really did dance? Aye. The costliest chardash we ever watched. We had to get the fuck out of there before Collini came back and had the two of us dancing on the end of a rope. Sir Kuno, can you tell me something about yourself? Drop the sir. That title brought me nothing but grief. But what do you want to know? Sir Radzig told me the Rickvold family um, lost its wealth. How did that happen? There's all sorts of ways to become impoverished. Nothing easier, especially when your father's a fool. And your mother's mad as a bat. Oh. But it's a long and twisted story. We took our name from Rickval Castle. But that actually belonged to the convent of the poor Clares in Tynitz. And my father only leased it. You see, he knew the abbess there since they were young. Knew her very well. There was even talk that she only joined the order because her family wouldn't let her marry him. Anyway... Whether he was fucking her right there in the convent, or he just took a lot of interest in scripture, he spent an awful lot of time in Tynitz. Well, nobles can be very devout sometimes. <laughs> Not my old man. He cursed like a tanner's hand. More than once, he threatened to take a whip to our parish priest. Oh, he might have been after a bit of both. Sinning and confessing all in one place. Well, I can see the convenience of it. Anyway... My mother never had strong nerves. Truth be told, her sanity was always shaky. Pa's escapades drove her cuckoo entirely. Then, one frosty December morning, I was woken by screaming and smoke. I looked out the window, and I saw my mother there, in the courtyard, wreathed in flames. Behind her, the stables, the farm buildings and the tower were burning too. And she just stood there. Shrieking with laughter. Christ, that sounds like a scene straight out of hell. Hellish it was, I can tell you. Me and my sister Adela and a few servants managed to get out before the whole place went up. I couldn't get to my father. 
Well, my little brother. Poor lad was only seven. My sister and I were left destitute after the fire. But then my cousin, Adam of Drevich, took us into his castle. A few weeks later, he offered to buy what was left of our estates and sell me a small fortress near a Kovnik. It was a great relief. We suddenly had some hope of a future again. So I told my sister about it. And it was the biggest mistake of my life. A week later, the two of them announced to me they were getting married. And all that was left of our estates, lands, woods, villages, Adela was to get it all as a dowry. But surely that was for you to decide. You were the head of the family, right? Aye. Only I barely had 17 years under my belt, and I'd just lost everything. Of course, I argued with them. And that was the only excuse they needed to kick me out of Drevich too. <sighs> That's pretty harsh. You're telling me. But I'm not complaining. As my pa always used to say, if you can turn your hand to something, you'll never be lost. I doubt it ever crossed his mind how often I'd remember those words. Those Behrman brothers are quite a pair. Indeed they are. There's no more mercy in them than in, well, a bear. If I told them to skewer you on the spot, they'd do it without batting an eyelid. Jesus. Oh, aye. They'd argue first about which one of them got to do the job. But they're as obedient as a huntsman's dogs. Real soldiers, a pair of them. Reliable. As long as they don't get too drunk. Then there's no keeping them under control. But nobody's perfect. What about the fellow they call Dangler? I've never ridden with a better man, I can tell you. He doesn't say a lot, but for that he listens all the better. Nothing escapes him. So he scouts for you? Not just that. It's happened more than once. I was closing a deal with someone, and Dangler told me after that he didn't like the smell of the fellow. Nearly every time he was right, and the fellow tried to stab me in the back afterwards. What can you tell me about Stefan? Fletching? For one thing, he's a very resourceful fellow. How did he come to join your band? Well, let's just say he was in the right place at the right time. You'll find he has quite a knack for that. What exactly happened? Sorry, I'd love to tell you the whole story, but I'd be betraying his trust. Oh, now you've got me curious. Maybe I should ask him myself. Sure, why not? Our Fletch does love to converse. What about that dumb one? How did he end up with you? The stone? Oh, he just kind of tagged along. Just like that? Aye, just like that. We were riding from Olomots to a castle past Kladsko when we ran into him and some other wayfarers camping along the way. You know how it goes. We made acquaintance with them, had a drink or two. Then we travelled on together. After all, there's safety in numbers. I'm not sure I'd be thinking that if I ran into you lot on the road. We might have done some things I ain't proud of. But Wayfair is a sacred even for me. Anyway, our fellow travellers dropped off along the way. One in Mohelnitz, one in Schoenberg, and the rest in Kladsko. Except for the stone. He stuck with us the whole way. The fellas kept asking him what he was after. But of course, he never said a word. When we were approaching Barsdorf, I ordered the men to get rid of him. I had some business at the castle, and I didn't want any strangers sticking their noses in. Stefan tried to tell him nicely. But he just sat there, staring like he was turned to stone. That's when we gave him the name. Then the Bearman brothers tried to get him off his horse. He booted Jan in the face and knocked him out cold. Then he jumped down and fell Petter with one punch. Whew, a man who can do that is a man you want on your side. So we kept him. Weren't you worried about having a stranger in your band? Especially one who didn't talk. No, I figured if he can't talk, he can't tell. Besides, I've had worse. How was it you said again? That the letter B is a wench with a belly on her. <laughs> Ain't it fate that Bearman starts with a pregnant woman? <laughs> <laughs> know any Latin insults? <laughs> De fute futueo et Cabalum to um? What's it mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
course, as fucking good. You're priceless, you are. What about Jakey? Jakey? That boy will be the death of me. You've got to be tough on him, or he's good for nothing. But I'm fond of him, in a way. Like her son? I wouldn't go that far. But I've no family of my own. And unlike those other cutthroats, he seems to me like... Like a good lad. Well, you're pretty hard on him, though. And the others keep him on his toes, too. The boy needs a firm hand. I was like him once, and I got the same too. If we let him be, we'd end up with a third bear man. And who'd want that? <laughs> True. Two is more than enough. What about your debt to Sir Radzik? How did that come about? A twist of fate, lad. I was fighting in the hostilities between the house of Schallenberg and the town of Colleen. Some trade dispute it was. And I fought under the Schallenberg colours. In the end, the two sides negotiated a truce. And I rode to Colleen with the delegation that was to parlay there. We stopped off at an inn on the way. And it was there that I met Radzig Kobila. I could tell at first sight he was a man after my own heart. A likeable rogue with a sharp mind and a merry soul. We spent the whole night drinking together and talking. And in the morning, we set off together with sore heads, but in good temper, since he was travelling the Colleen same as I was. Only... Once we reached the city gates, they arrested me on the spot. <laughs> Seems the burghers had it in for me, since I'd been making their lives hell for a good six months. On the other hand, I was a member of the peace delegation, so by rights, they shouldn't have even looked at me sideways. And then it hit me why Radzig was there. Colleen is a royal city, so he was there to represent the king's interests. I see. So he was on the other side. That's right. Anyway, they threw me in a dungeon, and a few days later, word reached me that the Schallenbergs had reached an agreement with the Burgers. Only part of the deal was they would give them my head, and I'd surely have ended my day swinging from the town battlements if it hadn't been for Radzig. He liked me, and he could see it was a dirty trick, so he somehow squared things with the city council. Lucky for you. Indeed. I owe my life to Radzig. And I'll never forget it. He's asked me twice before for help. This is the third time. And how could I refuse him? Stefan, I'm curious how you ended up in Kuno's band. You notice I don't exactly fit in with this pack of felons and reprobates, huh? Unfortunately, you can't always choose your company, can you? <laughs> no, I suppose not. But how did you come to be with them? Oh, well, I'd love to tell you, but Kuno insisted we keep that between the two of us. And I'm not one to break a confidence. Oh, but, well, Kuno said it was you who wanted to keep it secret. Really? <laughs> Are you sure about that? You must have misunderstood him. No, I don't think so. At least... Oh, never mind. So, where did you live before? What did you do? I used to live in a town before. Back there I was doing something very different. Although, now I think of it, maybe it wasn't that different in a way. If you know what I mean. Actually, I haven't the foggiest idea what you mean. You don't give anything away, do you? Me? <laughs> I'm an open book, lad. Ask me anything you like and I'll give you an honest answer. Go on. Uh, maybe another time. My head's starting to spin. As you wish. Shame, though. There's nothing I enjoy more than conversing. Hey, Jakey, can you tell me something about yourself? Want to get matey, eh? Sure, Henry. What do you want to know? How did you end up in Kuno's band? Well, I used to be a baker's hand in Prague, but all the other fellas were always on my back, always swearing at me. Sometimes they even beat me up, took everything I had. To make a bit of coin, I started going to the tavern across the road, entertaining the rich gents with jokes, playing the fool. Sometimes someone would throw me a half groschen. One time, Kuno turned up there, and I got to talking with him. When I told him all the shit I was getting at the bakery, he offered to take me with him. Hmm. I bet you were glad to get out of there. Yeah, though it's not like they give me much peace here either. It's all, Jakey, come here. Jakey, go there. Jakey, get that. How come they bullied you at the bakery? It's usually the shy ones bullies pick on. That's not exactly you. Not now, maybe. I learned a thing or two since then. Oh, come on, you shy? 
You just said you were playing the fool and telling jokes in the tavern. All right, I'll tell you the truth. They picked on me because I'm an orphan. The parish priest of St. Apollinaire's in Prague found me as a baby in the church one winter's morning. I spent half my childhood in parish houses and half on the street. I see. That must have been tough. It still is tough, I can tell you that. Well, surely you can't be any worse off here than in the bakery. No, only at the bakery, the worst I ever got was a beating. It's not like my life was in danger. But here, when those Beerman brothers are drunk, I have to keep well out of sight. Why do they call you Dangler? Because Kuno found me dangling on the end of a rope. Ah, I see. So, um, he saved you from execution? I wouldn't call it an execution, exactly. At the time, I was squire to the Lord of Buzitz. That was a proper night for you, full of ideals and honour. I looked up to him as a hero. Then in one skirmish, he was killed, and the foe took me captive. They stood me on a shaky wooden cross with my hands tied behind my back and a noose around my neck. For amusement. Then they rode off laughing. But how long were you stuck there? I couldn't tell you. Hours. Maybe days. In the end, everything started going black. I could feel the devil pulling me down by the legs. Jesus! How on earth did you survive? I didn't. When Kuno found me, he says I was dead as a doornail. They cut me down and took the rope off me. Then someone gave me a kick and I coughed and came back to life. Sort of. Henry may have thought that it was a good fighter, but his experience was no match for someone like Dangler, who'd been on countless campaigns. It was time to up his skills and his equipment. When Bernard's union mandated lunch break is over, of course. Only barbaric humans would interrupt lunchtime. And in any case, Henry wouldn't want to be reported to HR. Back in those days, fired and sacked meant something else altogether. You call that? <laughs> this is the point where my house rules allow me to train my combat skills up to 15. Reaching defense 15 also means that I can wear any type of armor. That includes plate, but we'll restrict that until Henry reaches a higher status, shall we say? So Henry will now dress in mail, brigandine and simple plate when he's approaching combat situations. I want to challenge you again. If you like. Reckon you've improved? I reckon I have. We'll see then. Maybe if you're lucky, I'll have got worse. Let's do it then. Missed. Oh, you aren't so tough now, Dangler, are you? You didn't fare badly at all, I must say. You can ride with us. All right, good. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. You don't know what you're letting yourself in for. <laughs> but it was out? time to ride. Aye, we ought to set out on patrol about now. Hope you've got your kit ready and whatnot. I'd like to head to the north. Is there anything interesting that way? North of here. Uh, Samapesh and Merhoyed are that way. And Talmberg is a bit further on. There's stables in Merhoyed. I wouldn't mind paying a visit to those stables. We can go through there. And from there? From there, we'll follow our noses. Something interesting is sure to turn up. I feel it in my bones. Man up and let's go. Sure. Chief. What a fine day, eh, brother? Indeed, brother. You know what I like best about days like this, Jan? Yeah? Hmm. The scent of chamomile wafting from the hillsides. Among other things. Ah, like the rounded hills, rising, pertly, all soft and pink in the sunlight. And the fertile valley below, spreading wide and inviting. Dew glistening in a mossy hollow. The sweet aroma of honey in the air. The sturdy poplar, standing tall and erect. Aye, it reminds me of that day. That day, where the two of us fuck Fletch's ma. <laughs> 
very droll. You'd make a stuffed bird laugh. Your ma's a stuffed bird. <laughs> I stuffed her myself. <laughs> I can't smell any chamomile. Well, men, how are things? May I? Yes, Fletch. How shall I? I'm a little concerned about the prospects in these parts, Chief. Oh? How's that? I've been looking around, and if you'll pardon me, it seems to me that we've been stuck for a long time in the arsehole of beyond. It's not Paris, France, I'll grant you. What I mean to say is, I haven't got any new kit or arrows since the day Jakey joined us. It makes me uneasy, Chief. I see. What about the rest of you? I don't know what Fletch is moaning about. There's plenty of booze and loose wenches nearby. Not to mention fools in the taverns who don't know when to stop rolling those dice. Dangler? It's the arsehole of beyond everywhere we go. And it always makes me uneasy. Jakey? Fletch can complain. I was supposed to get a suit of armor, and all I got was a shitty kettle hat. Sorry, but they don't do hoberks in girl sizes. Oh? Well, how did you get yours, then? All right. I appreciate your honesty, lads. Don't worry. There will be plunder. We're here to fight. And to the victor, the spoils. That's how it's always been. But no purse of silver will shed blood for you on the battlefield. That's what this company is for. And I hope you never forget the golden rule. You can joke all you want, moan all you want, but nothing will keep your skins in one piece better than trusting your leader, who you choose by your own free will. So don't ever forget that. Amen. Chief, I think there's something going on over there. Let's go! Behind me and keep your eyes peeled. This farmstead was one Henry had gone past many a time on his way north from Ratai. While he didn't know the residents, they should have been safe on this major road, so close to Tamburg and the Inn of the Glade. What do you think we can expect this time, fellas? Groschen, hidden in a piss pot under the bed. A nice chunk of beef no one there will be eating. On account of it, it'd just fall out through the holes in their bellies, eh, brother? <laughs> <laughs> My mouth is already watering, brother. And I ain't even touched a purse yet. Once you've got your hands on some loot, I'll be happy to play you for your hard-earned grosh in the back of the camp. Poor old Fletch. Never gets to see the action from close up. What about you, Dangler? What do you expect to find? Utility in human suffering, like always. Always full of good cheer, eh, Dangler? Why don't you take a leaf out of Stone's book and shut the fuck up? Jesus, I wish you'd all shut the fuck up. Keep your eyes peeled, though. There might be someone hiding out here still. Look for clues and question the survivors, if there are any. The team spreads out to investigate the site and look for tracks. Clearly the veterans. Did the raiders leave any tracks? Well, they came from the northwest. A horse or two and a few men on foot. Anything else? No, nothing. But there's also a dark side to a veteran band. Would you stop doing that? You think they'll have any use for this stuff? That's not the point. Robbing the dead isn't right. That's what you say. I say it's all the fucking same to them. They're dead. And Prague Groschen are worthless in Lombardy. Never mind in the hereafter. I'm telling you for the last time, stop it. And I'm telling you for the last time, I see no reason why I should. You call yourself a Christian? And you're robbing the dead? They've no use for anything, and I have to eat. I've seen your camp. It doesn't look to me like you want for anything. Not now. But a man's got to have something to secure his future. And what did you take from that corpse? Um, uh, a wooden spoon and some string. Oh, great. You can retire right away. I hope it's worth your immortal soul to you. You're a bit holier than thou, ain't you? But all right, they ain't got nothing worth a damn anyway. Kuno, your men are robbing the dead. What did you expect, Henry? Old habits die hard. Most of the lads ain't had an easy life. Oh, maybe it's time they turned over a new leaf then. 
<laughs> you ought to be a priest. Try telling them yourself then, if you want to hear some choice swear words. From the looks of it, it seems that the farmers were caught completely by surprise and killed by a massed volley of arrows. <sighs> Looks like it happened fast. The body Jan had been looting was from one who'd managed to crawl away. God almighty. But didn't get far. This was no robbery. This was a massacre. They weren't even armed. No signs of resistance. They simply slaughtered them like animals. And inside one of the houses, Henry finds a letter addressed to Sir Radzik. Oh. Oh. Kuno will want to know about this. For all the flowery language and talk about honour, it didn't seem very honourable to kill farmhands just to send the message. Clearly nobles didn't think of peasants as anything other than cattle. I found this shield in a shed along with a letter. Seems like someone left us a message. Show me that. Hmm. I know that crest. It's the house of Zul. A dangerous lot, God's truth. I don't think we'll find anything else here. We'll stay here a while, just in case. And you should go and report to Radzig what happened. What do you know about these Zuls? A family of impoverished nobles. They fought in the Margraviate Wars in Moravia. But what they're after in Bohemia, I've no idea. I thought I could go and search for those raiders. They might not have gotten very far yet. All right. It's always good to have an extra pair of eyes. We'll keep searching here for a while, and then head back to the camp. Did you find any tracks? Some, a horse or two. They rode off through the meadow towards dawn. They were avoiding the road, which is interesting. Towards dawn? Meaning towards the east. Apart from the mounted ones, there were some men on foot too. Well weighed down. Well, they can't move too fast then. No, and what's more, they left a trail of blood. One or more of them might be wounded. Either that, or they dragged off some poor bastard from here. It's possible to just leave it be and return to Sir Radzik, but searching the area around the edge of the forest shows a dead horse in a clear trail of wreckage. Slaughter and spoilage were the goal here. There was no difference to what happened in Neuhof or Moho yet. Zul was no less the mercenary than Kuno, no less abandoned than Wolfland, and no less a killer than Runt. There they are. The sensible thing would be to call for reinforcements. In which case, Kuno's men will show their mettle. I tracked down those raiders. You did? Well, nice work. So where are they? A short way to the east, in a glade in the woods. They're dividing up their loot. How many of them are there? About ten or so. Ten? Fuck, I don't like those odds. I'll tell the lads we're gonna deal with them. Nice and quiet. To me, now! Henry tracked down those bastards who raided the farm. They're dividing up their loot, not far from here. So let's pounce on them and give them what for. Move out! Quiet as the grave, as the stone would say. That's a good one. I haven't heard that one since. Let me see. At a loss for words, are you? <laughs> Stop it, please. Or I'll split my sides laughing. I feel sorry for the stone. Imagine not being able to insult your enemy's mother. Ah, big mouth Jakey makes up for it. I don't know how you managed without me for so long. Who was it needed their back cover last time? Jakey. Jakey. Fuck you. I don't need minding. We all cover each other's backs. That's how this band works. Get used to it. I've no intention of getting myself killed by a bunch of bandits who pillaged a farm for cabbage. Well, I don't know. You might get mistaken for a cabbage yourself. Aye, he's green enough. <laughs> I'll cover you, Jakey. Got it? Thanks a lot, Fletch. But they can die here. So be sure to take a swig of the old Sabish schnapps before talking to Kuno. Oh, God. I like that feigned strike from the left, brother. Yeah, nice trick. What do you call that? The secret of the trade, sonny. 
But you lost your puff fighting that other fucker, didn't you, brother? Nah. I was just faking it to confuse him. <laughs> oh, yeah? So how come you were still breathless after, eh? Which do you reckon is better to fight in, brother? High grass or low grass? I'd say low grass. Nobody asked you. What do you think, brother? I don't know. It ain't that important, maybe. But now, if your opponent has a loose counter... You can get hold of it and knock the weapon right out of his hand. And let him have your blade right into the side. A greenhorn's mistake. I keep thinking about that grass, though. You know what I like best in a skirmish, Jan? Pray tell, brother. When there's one last fucker left, we surround him. Hack him from all sides. Until he falls in a bloody heap on the ground. I love that. <laughs> we ought to wager on who delivers the fatal blow. A new wager? Fletch will be up for that. We gotta do something to spice things up. To make it more like a proper war. Maybe if we timed our attacks better. It'll look more like a battle plan, eh? But when your blood's up... Aye, plans go to hell in the heat of battle. Everyone's still going to lay into that last fucker with everything they got anyway. Aye, even if we have to chase him all the way to Olomots to do it. All right. Next time, we'll see who delivers the coup de grace. Jakey can keep an eye on it while he's hiding in the bushes, shitting his braise as usual. The only place I'll be shitting is in your tent. Right, we'll have a look around here for, uh, uh clues. Meanwhile, Henry, you go and report to Radzig. Of course, Kuno's men would safeguard the recovered loot. Just like Peshek and the Millers would, right? Henry can also Leroy Jenkins himself after. Just don't take too long, otherwise Hekuna will return to camp without Henry. Track down those raiders. You did? Well, nice work. So where are they? Well, they were a short way off to the east, in the woods, dividing up their loot. Were? They're gone now? Which way? Uh, down. To hell, where I sent them. What? Jesus, Henry. Are you out of your mind? Well, I took advantage at the moment of surprise. Christ above, I've met some mad bastards in my time, but... Regardless of how the bandits are dealt with, it's obvious that these aren't just random raids. Surely Zoratik will have much to say on the matter. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.